I grew up in the northeast of England uh, in the in the 1980s. So diesel passenger trains, the HSTs, moving into the class 91 in the city 225s, have always kind of been a big draw for me. That's what I've wanted to model for a, a number of years now. Just never really had the space or the time. So moving into a new home about a year ago, ended up with this outdoor section. It's uh, and I moved back a whole ways, but it's uh, basically a 11 foot by 11 foot shed, um, which is pretty weatherproof. Uh, I've left it over the window just to see how it was going to, you know, work out. I had put uh, weatherproofing on the outside, new siding on the outside. Uh, I got a little bit of electrical work to do uh, over on the side here, just because it was a little bit low. If I'm putting in bench work. Um, but it's pretty nice in that it already had outdoor electrics, it's already got uh, roof put in place, it's already got uh, the tile roof on that, it's already got a very nice fan in here that'll come out, but at least it's got some amount of electrics. Maybe put some insulation in here as well, we'll see how it goes. It actually stayed pretty okay once, uh, once all the siding was up and the weather, weather sheeting was up. So, I'm going to start laying the bench work now. That's what all the 2x3 is going to be, or 1x3 rather, is going to end up being. It's going to be all the way around the outside, so kind of right where I'm standing here, coming in. Uh, right around this front door will be a little bit of a lift up section, so you could then step in. Um, Newcastle Central Station itself will be over in this corner here. Uh, it's pretty large when I've uh, designed it out and computer modeling just to kind of get an idea of how it would be so we'll see once the bench work goes in place we'll get an idea of just what it's going to end up looking like so you'll come into newcastle central station have the main lines uh, main platforms uh, shorter platforms for the two and three car dmus swinging around uh, this will probably simulate into team valley area which was a retail park over on this side, we'll probably end up with what was Tiny Yard, or is, I guess, Tiny Yard. It's not used as much. I think it was ever planned, uh, but it certainly doesn't seem like it's used as much now. Tiny Yard is going to go in here, so I'll give me some kind of Fred Yard. Uh, I can probably do a TMD in there as well. Maybe just look at some stabling for passenger coaches. I haven't figured out uh, great design when I've been trying to plan this out. It's one of those things where it, it looks like a lot of a lot of space. It's you know 11 foot along this length, but by the time I swing in the turns on either end to bring passenger cars in and bring long freight cars in, you know, I lose quite a bit of space on how much I have there. So that's probably something where I'm going to lay the bench work for uh, just the main lines and leave. An extension that I'm going to bring out a little bit. Um, it's going to be probably two feet wide and then when I bring in tiny yard I'll probably bring it out another 18 inches maybe two feet we'll see I don't want it to be too far for me to do work on on the branch line at the end but that's probably going to be the second phase the first phase that I'm really going to be trying to focus on is really this corner over here and that's going to be Newcastle Central Station that's going to be the focal point of this. Um, I actually grew up in Durham, which is just 10-12 oh, miles down the East Coast Main Line from Newcastle. I had looked at doing Durham. I would love to be able to model Durham Station, but the reality is, is that it's not a particularly exciting station. There's not a whole lot going on. Newcastle Central um, has an awful lot more history to it. Uh, I went to college, lived and worked around the Gateshead in Newcastle area before I moved out to the US, so Newcastle Central is still pretty near to my heart. Um, making a little bit of a challenge is that I do live in America. I've lived over here for over a decade now. So getting the double O gauge um, locomotives and getting some of the ideas, um, just not as much when you go to some of the fairs that they have, some of the shows that they have, local model shops, most of it is catered towards HO gauge. And I do have some HO gauge as well, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do because I have such a good space, even with having bench work. I mean, this is over over eight foot high as you can see it goes way way up um, I'm envisioning that without taking on too much I'll probably have um, a small not small but probably about the same size but almost a shelf layout running around or at least a shelf layout on one wall so I can do some of the HL gauge stuff from the US as well because there are a couple of cool a uh, couple of cool prototypes that I would like to try and model, but this is going to be Newcastle Central on double log edge. 
um, not giving any kind of time frame as to how long this is going to take, but uh, let's get started on some of the bench work. So then with the sun casting long shadows as the first set of bench work in, you maybe just do it with some supports across the bottom there just to kind of hold those legs apart. The challenge in doing this was that the floor wasn't quite level. Uh, the actual shed itself isn't quite square. Now I'm not going to uh, own up to that part. I didn't actually build this. This was already here. Like I had said, I just put the weather sheeting and siding on it. And I knew that it wasn't square from doing measurements. Um, so if we come in onto the back corner, uh, this front piece is actually uh, almost one inch shorter than the back piece to actually end up lining it square um, to go all the way down. Or it would have ended up being uh, an inch shorter if we try to keep it along that back wall. So everything is square, everything is fine, but you can see we start to come away from a little, a little bit and then out here we're out a little ways too. You can see it more clearly down the bottom there as we had been flush pretty much right in on that back leg we're out oh about an inch and a half almost two inches by the time we get down the bottom no problem like i say everything in terms of the bench work is square everything is all level as well um with some clever engineering on cutting different lengths to the legs the only thing i think is down on the bottom maybe he's put in some strips as you can see they're just kind of loosely in place the one by three makes it very very light it is very very sturdy um but just to kind of hold those hold those legs in place you can see that that one's come out just a little bit that near side leg um, but overall, quite happy with that. Um, in terms of the cost of lumber, it was only about uh, $25 maybe uh, for all of the 1x3 to do this. I ended up with uh, three bundles, and so I took about a dozen air foot lengths of 1x3 to do this. Um, very, very light, very easy to work with. Um, did have to pre-drill some holes on some of the longer screws. Uh, as you can see, this is how they kind of go on together, so it's just a 1x3 frame. And then I've got, uh, I think they were 15 inch lengths, cut to 45 degrees, just to kind of give it some support on either side, and like that all the way around. So I think, quick do some pieces on the bottom, and then probably just clamp, and then screw these two pieces together, and that's good. So a little more progress now, we've got the rest of the bench work in for what is going to be Newcastle Central itself. This ended up being a lot bigger than I had really envisioned. Uh, putting it in to computer program and trying to design out the track work didn't really give me an idea as to quite how large this was going to end up being. So I knew that we were going to have this kind of diagonal piece coming across and it would end up pretty small just with you know three branch lines coming out here because of the sweep of the station as it curves around um, this ended up being a lot deeper than I was expecting. So I did narrow it down a little bit from what was on the track plan. So what I've ended up having to do is reinforce all of this section. So basically, um, it's strong enough for me to sit on. Um, not ideal at all. I did not want this to be anywhere near this wide. Um, just to try and give some impression, if I try and lean over, I can reach to about here. Um, almost in the middle of that section, which is, that one's 36 inches, so we've probably got over five feet, uh, probably five and a half feet, six feet almost, so way back into that corner. That's way, way deeper than I was um, really expecting it to be, even though, like I say, I designed all this out um, in computer software. So I was a little concerned when I first put this together, but then I went back, looked at the design, um, and really the, the station itself will enter the throat of the station right around here, and immediately some of the lines start to curve. So there's a freight line that runs off to one side of the station, and one platform comes down here. You then enter in, and then there's two platforms that will run around that kind of way sweeping. There's then another two platforms that will run probably around the middle, and then start to sweep away. Uh, northbound platforms in around here. There's two short ones for, uh, for like a three car uh, DMU. And then over on the back here, there's another, uh, actually four sets of platforms will sweep in. But what I'm expecting is that even those, uh, even those shorter platforms for the DMUs will probably sweep around to right around this little part here, maybe it's a little bit further back. So there is a lot of space 
Like I said, because of this diagonal piece, I'm not actually expecting an awful lot of the usable station to be all the way back there. It's just going to make it a little bit harder when it comes to trying to figure out some of the platforms, some of the shops, and some of that station. Um, one thing that I, that I I knew from the outset is that um, Newcastle Station itself, the actual building, Newcastle Central Station building itself, I think is a Grade One listed building, uh, very historic building. Um, but you only actually see it from the outside, looking towards the station. You don't when you're inside of it, you don't see all that um, quite iconic brickwork out in the front. I knew that I was not going to be able to replicate that and, and really model that because I'm backed up against the wall. You will you'll never see it from the other side, so I won't be doing that. Um, and I'm quite happy with uh, with uh, with the weekend's work. This was probably in total five to six hours, uh, probably more like six hours on the bench work side to get all of this done. And a lot of that was the additional engineering work they had doing here. I put in a lot more legs than I was expecting, uh, just to make sure that if I do need to lean over and lean on it for a, for a period of time to be able to work on the back, I can do that. Uh, there's no real way I could put any kind of power access hatches here, but I'm hoping that once it's done. It will be fine, like I said, the throat of the session. I'll start somewhere around here and then start to sweep around and see so you won't really see it. And I think it will work out pretty good that when you're over on the other side, again, the throat coming in, if you're looking on, uh, looking towards the north, the throat of the session will come in and start to sweep around there. And I think it'll actually look, this will look pretty good. So I do have more work to do, like I said, for the rest of it. The other side of the layout and what will end up being uh, over here. I need to get this tidied out. Uh, got some old kitchen appliances that I've been using. <laughs> some bench work. Need to get those those taken away. Um, what I will say is that uh, if you don't have one of these compound miter saws uh, worth their weight in gold, beg, steal, or borrow. This isn't actually mine. This is one I borrowed from a friend when I was doing the kitchen project to get rid of those appliances. Uh, with the sheer amount of bench work that I had to do here, uh, just would not really have been a fun job if I was trying to do it by hand. Uh, you will see that there are some uh, little shims down the bottom here. Uh, as I had said in clips before, the floor isn't quite level here, so... Um, some of the legs I measured as I was going and made them just long enough to be able to, to take the adjustments in the floor. Some of them I do have to shim just a little bit. Um, so I will get some, some extra wooden shims on the front that I can then cut down the length so I don't have these longer pieces in place. But overall, quite happy. Now that I actually see it um, and see this the scale of what I'm building here, it's, uh, it's going to look pretty cool. I now have the rest of the bench work. And this left hand side down and was actually a few days between this still have the awesome old kitchen appliances down on the bottom uh, they hopefully will be going away in the recycling event next weekend so this is now pretty much all of the bench work done so if we sweep around this will be uh, kind of the scenic area off to the back i still have to put in where the goods yard would be where tiny yard is going to be will be a jet out part uh, around here maybe bring it out another 18 inches maybe two feet I haven't quite figured out the, the design of what that's going to be yet um, but right now this is two feet wide so that'll be enough to get uh, the two passenger lines uh, and then a fret line coming through and we put in some of the switches uh, to where I will swing off to a tiny yard uh, we'll then have coming out of the throat of the station here is then going to be where the bulk of the station itself is going to be which we covered in that last little clip sweeping all the way around uh, to then where the bridge is going to be. So this that last part uh, right across here uh, is where the high level bridge is going to be. I haven't quite figured out the, the design for that. I did also go through and drill holes uh, to run all of the bus cables for uh, DCC power, uh, bus power as well. I'm just running through right now. That should be plenty enough at least to get me going and then see. I might need to run more over here just because of the sheer size of the station if I'm running my DCC bus power uh, through the middle there. That's going to be quite a distance when I put my dropper wires in. I don't really want to have two foot droppers uh, to the track so we'll see how that goes. I want to try and keep the droppers as short as possible normally. Keep them as close to that man's bus power as you can do. Um, but quite happy with, with how well this is has turned out. Uh, it's all very, very solid now. Everything's screwed together, but still somewhat detachable if it needed to be. Uh, same as I had done over here. I joined the legs together. Exact same kind of framework that I had put in place. If we come over 
uh, just 45 degree angles to hold everything together. Uh, like I say, I then put uh, some little plates down the bottom there to hold the legs in place. I mean, everything is is pretty solid. It doesn't really move. Just you know, shaking it right now, it's all pretty solid. Uh, so yeah, I'm at the point now where I think I could figure out going ahead and getting the actual plywood tops. Probably just going to use uh, a half inch plywood all the way across the top here and then try and work on the design over here. I know that it's going to be probably 8 or 10 inches wide on the bridge. I just haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do on the on that lower part. Probably is about 12 to 15 inches below. need to figure out scale height of the bridge as to where the actual river would be. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a similar kind of bench work idea here, um, but at about 15 inches or so beneath, so that I would have some kind of base for where the river would be. And then over here, I know I'm going to have to bring it up probably is about 15 inches, 18 inches away from the edge there. That's where there's going to be a little pop up section. Uh, so you're going to be able to walk in. All of this will be covered by by where the bridge and the river would be so a little bit of rain out here in Seattle <laughs> as well hence I've been quite happy to be out here but uh, yeah so this is all of the bench work now pretty much complete like I say what's going to be going in for the bridge will be pretty minimal compared to all of this so this is uh, this is the bulk of the work done ready to actually put down the plywood plywood tops <laughs> 